What is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video here today. Kind of a strange one here coming from my bedroom, not the garage, not a car meet, not a car event here, but I want to talk to you guys briefly about preparing to register your JDM car. So as you guys know, I have two personal cars on the way and a third one on the way. Actually, they're all three arrived. They actually all three arrived to the port last night. I'm super excited about it and we'll be heading down there to pick them up soon. But I kind of want to document this process to help future customers out and to help other people that are going through the same thing out and just get it on camera, get it out on YouTube so you guys can have a nice easy process when it comes time to do your own vehicle. So today I'm just going to talk to you about kind of the DMV side of things and registering a Japanese car in the United States of America, specifically South Carolina. Each state can be different a little bit, but I went to the DMV today hoping to register both of the cars before they arrived or before we went and picked them up, but it didn't work out. So whenever I was in North Dakota, I imported my R32 GTR, if you guys were watching the channel back then. I owned that car for three years in Okinawa and then brought it to North Dakota with me. The military paid for all that and made the whole process super easy of actually importing it, but I still had to basically register it on my own. They didn't require the original export certificate, which was great because that was a pain in the butt with the military. Shipping privately, no problem. Your export certificate will be to you if you're doing business with us pretty much right um, right when the car ships, once it leaves Japan, it'll be DHL'd out to you in like two or three days, it'll be at your front door. But military, big pain in the butt, that's a whole different story. Anyways, this is what an export certificate looks like right here. I'll put it up on the screen so you guys can take a little bit of a look at it. The export certificate is basically the title when the car is shipped out of Japan. When the car is in Japan, it has a, an actual title that looks very similar to the export certificate. But whenever it's exported, us in Japan, Justan, Ito-san, any of the guys at the shop, they have to take the title to the land transportation office, which is basically like the DMV. And then they turn the title into an export certificate that basically says who the last owner was, the last address. And if you're buying a car from us in Japan, it's going to be JDM Global as the last owner. And you won't have your name anywhere on the export certificate, but that's okay. Because what you'll also get is a, let me cover up the prices here, a bill of sale. Now the bill of sale is very important because that is basically, that has the seller's name, I'll put it up on the screen without the prices, JDM Global, and it has all of the buyer's info, which would be yourself, in this case it's me. Um, right now we're taking a look at the GTO invoice and the GTO export certificate just for reference. Now with these two documents, not even the original export certificate. So the DMV required in North Dakota that I needed a translated copy of the export certificate. So what I did was I translated it myself using the little bit of Japanese knowledge I know plus using a translation app on the things that I didn't know on my phone and just scanning and then would type it in like I scanned the export certificate in and then typed in over the actual Japanese writing what it was in English. The export certificate, as you guys can see, already comes with a lot of translations on it, so it's kind of ridiculous that you even have to translate it. But, you do, and I was able to translate it myself in North Dakota, give them a copy of that, and good to go, it worked. But, not so easy in South Carolina as I found out today. I rolled up to there today with the export certificate, the original, like you guys see, a translated copy of the export certificate, like you guys see on your screen now, and also the bill of sale. I thought that would be enough, but it wasn't. South Carolina informed me that I needed more documents and that my translation on the export certificate wouldn't work because it needs to be a credited translation from a credited translator. Big pain in the butt, but not really because we do have a team in Japan that can help with that as well. We'll be sending out translated export certificates to you guys and you can put all our info down. For example, take a look at this sheet right here. This is a form 4030. This is a South Carolina DMV form. And you see here at the bottom, it says that they need the translator's information. So what we're going to do there is I'm going to put all of Destan's info in Japan. He is bilingual, obviously. He speaks Japanese and English, as you guys, if you're following the Garage Defend YouTube channel, which if you're not, go do that. He's still in Japan. He's still doing all the videos. He's still at the shop running the show. So go check out those videos. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of his info in down here. And this is kind of the goofy part. So it needs to be an American Translator Association which is like a, a group, American Translators Association, or other accreditations where you can write it in, it says. So, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have his American Translators Association, association degree or something, I don't know. But 
I mean, he's obviously fluent. He's been to school over there and all this. So it's not a problem. And who is going to call a Japanese number and a Japanese address at the DMV when you're registering your car? Nobody's going to do that. It shouldn't be a problem. I will update you guys if it is, but I don't foresee it being any problem at all. But that is the first form extra in South Carolina that I needed was this. And it's basically just got all the information on it. It wants you to fill out all the vehicle identification number and blah, 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 blah. All the stuff that's on the translated export certificate already. Additionally, you will need some other documents. Now these documents are documents that you will get from us or from the port when you pick the car up, if you choose to pick the car up. We also offer titling services. We can title a car for you in the States. We can take care of everything from the very start to the very end. But if you're looking to save yourself a little money or you want to do it yourself, you can do that too. It's possible. It's just, you know, there's a little more to it. There's a little more of a process. It's just a little more time consuming, but I'm figuring it all out. I'm understanding the process a lot better now. The other documents required are import documents, basically. They form HS7, which is right here. The HS7, I think it's the, yeah, it's like the import declaration. It's just, it has the car's info. What I'm looking at right here is not the GTO. I don't have all the documents yet for my cars since I haven't picked them up from the port yet. This is the documents on the GTR that I imported to North Dakota about a year ago. And here's the declaration for that. It's, it's a very simple thing. It's just got my info. It actually doesn't even, doesn't even have any of my info. It's just about the car being imported. The other form you need is the 3520-1. It's an EPA document. It's got some of my personal info on here, so I'm not going to throw it up on the screen, but it basically has a U.S. conforming and identical vehicles like list down here. It's like a bunch of codes basically. And the one, if you're importing a car that's 25 years or older, or for the EPA, it's 21 years, but that's a whole nother story. 21 years, cars are EPA legal, but 25 years, they're federally legal to import. So it's kind of redundant, but code E is vehicle at least 21 years old. So that right there is exempt from all EPA modifications. And that's just what the DMV needs to see because they don't have a clue. You walk up and you say, like, in my redneck Pickens, South Carolina DMV, I walked up and I said, hey, I have three Japanese cars I need to register. And the lady looked at me and said, like, oh, God. Well, I'm going to have to ask you to go down to the other end and talk to one of those other ladies. She was just kidding. She was really nice about it, but, I mean, she had no clue what she was doing. Anyways, next is the 3461. That is an entry summary. And that is here all in a packet. You should get a nice little packet just like this. And this packet basically says that the car belongs to me, the shipping company, and has my info. I'm not going to throw this one up either since I, it's got a lot of personal info as well. But it basically just states it's one car, you imported it, it belongs to you, this shipping company brought it in, blah, 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 blah. So you have to take all of these documents to the DMV, and then you should have your car registered. So I just want to go over that one more time. It's the Form 4030, which is the translation... Um, South Carolina Department of Motor Vehicles translation document. I'm sure you'll have something similar if you're in another state that requires an actual certified translation. And I think most of them do. I think I might have kind of gotten away with it in North Dakota and pulled a fast one on them. Other than that, you'll need the HS7, which is the import declaration, the EPA 3520-1, and the 3461 entry summary. Now all that stuff, it might sound kind of overwhelming, it might sound kind of like a lot, but all of that stuff will be provided for you. If you're watching this video and you haven't purchased a car from us, hopefully your exporter that you're buying your car from is taking care of you. If you do buy a car from us, like I said, as soon as the car ships out of Japan, we'll be able to ship out that export certificate to you. We'll ship out a translated export certificate with it. All that info of the shop can go in for a certified translator. After that, all the rest will come from us later on. All of the import documents, that's something that we can handle completely for you. I'll probably try to go into that later on in another video. Since I haven't actually picked up the cars myself yet, I want to kind of do that and I'll probably film that whole process as well just to kind of give you guys a good idea of how it goes and all the pricing and everything. For the actual registration portion, I think it's pretty simple. It's just, it's a lot of paperwork. A lot of paperwork. And if this is something you don't even want to take care of, this is something that we can completely do for you too. I'm super excited. I've been freaking out the last few days. I've been tracking that. There's also, yeah, let's talk about that for a second. Now, if you guys do want to track your shipment, there are apps that you can do that with. There's the Marine Traffic app that I downloaded. I think it was like four bucks on the app store. And right here you can see this is the boat that 
my cars came on. It's already left Savannah and is on its way to Virginia. And it gives all the details of everything where, like, take a look at this. Now we're not gonna be able to see the position of it because you have to pay an extra 99 cents for satellite GPS once it gets too far away from the coast. This is the last known position from five hours ago. Once it gets a little too far out, like, I don't know, you gotta pay extra. It's probably a gimmick, but I paid extra whenever I couldn't see the boat, but now I don't care since my cars aren't on it. But look at the amount of boats that are on this thing. There we go. So you can see right here in the Savannah port, like there's a bunch of boats here. You zoom out and there are just boats everywhere. Look at all that. You can see all the boats, like fishing boats, tug boats, shipping boats everywhere and it's massive it's a really cool app though i tracked it the whole way it made it really nice to kind of keep an eye it gives you estimated times of when it's going to what port and everything so i do recommend checking that out this is not a paid sponsorship or anything it's just a useful tool whenever you're importing your car but the vehicles did arrive yesterday super excited to head down to the port hopefully i'll hear something back soon it takes about three to five days business days to clear customs. So since they were offloaded probably sometime this morning or late last night, I'm guessing it'll take today to clear customs, maybe even tomorrow, maybe tomorrow to clear customs. Maybe I'll get the email of the go ahead that I can come pick them up and then I'll probably head down there Monday to pick them up and I'll be able to give you guys a nice, nice video of importing a car and kind of connect these two videos together a little bit. But hopefully this video was a little bit helpful. If you have any questions, go down in the comments. I haven't been responding to a lot of comments on a lot of my videos, but I understand this is a video that might draw some questions in. So if you do have questions, feel free to ask. If some of you guys have done this process before and want to share your stories in the comments, that's also would probably be helpful for other people. Um, but like I said, it's getting exciting. Got some cars coming in, baby. The Delica, I can't wait. The 180, I can't wait. I still got to fix the dash on the 180. That's going to be interesting in America. I'm so excited just to have content again too. I can start posting videos of all the cars and doing stuff with them. We're going to take the Delic on some sweet adventures as long as it doesn't sell right away. And then the GTO will be here too. The GTO is one of our, basically our first car available as the Garage Defend USA. And to touch on that, I know some of you guys were asking a little bit more about Garage Defend USA. We'll go into more detail in a separate video. I don't want to drag this video out for 30 minutes talking about the rest of everything that's going on. But it's an exciting time. I hope this video was informative for you and get ready for pickup video next. Thanks for watching. One more quick thing, I guess I kind of really didn't explain. I was thinking about it immediately after I shot off the camera. Once you have all those documents that I was explaining that the DMV needs, you just take that to the DMV. They'll fill out like one more form at the DMV. Then you're gonna pay some fees to the DMV. That's not any fees associated with us or associated with customs or anything like that. It depends on your state. I think South Carolina is 5% sales tax, so that's why they're gonna need those invoices. They're gonna wanna see what you paid for the car. And even though maybe you pay taxes overseas, maybe whatever, they're gonna get their state taxes from you. And But after that, after they get their taxes, all that bull crap, you will get a US title, a state title, and that is once, that makes it completely legal. Once it has a state title, if you wanna sell it, it makes the whole process a lot easier. The next person shouldn't need any of the import documents because you'll have a state title, signing over to somebody else's name, blah, 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 blah. Super easy, but I mean, we'll also provide copies of import documents and things like that for anybody who purchases our cars. But I just wanted to clear that up real quick. Now, for real, this is the end of the video. As always, thanks for watching. <laughs>